Hi everybody, uh, good morning. I uh, just figured I'd do a quick video and go over, a, uh, we're going to go over a passage from the Gospel of Truth in the Nag Hammadi Library. Um, just maybe, you know, just to sharpen it, edify the body. Um, start talking about the basic concepts um, in the Nag Hammadi scriptures. Um, I myself am learning and um, because I do believe um, these scriptures are meant to come to, to the light of their truth for the first time in the last days. And it's very obvious why if we understand the context of the Nag Hammadi scriptures. Now there are, are a lot of concepts and um, all this kind of stuff that throw people off. And um, what we're supposed to do is not just disregard it and walk away. We're supposed to keep studying. And, um, you know, if you perceive the truth in these texts, we're supposed to search the truth out. Um, so that's what I want to do. Um, we're supposed to kind of crucify our sin nature and not go into forgetfulness, as the scriptures say. Um, you know, and that is just our haste to just, you know, disregard everything, or, you know, Already people just in this ministry studying this stuff, bringing stuff that's not familiar, you know, we're worshiping the golden calf, um, you know, this is the great falling away. Guys, this is exactly what the scriptures talk about, of our forgetfulness. This is our sin nature kicking in. We're, we're supposed to have knowledge of the Father. Um, we're supposed to be uh, wise, patient, uh, long-suffering, okay? There is no idolatry going on here, <laughs> okay? None of that stuff. So there is no falling away, okay? The very foundations of our faith are not compromised. We're just covering things that are not popular. We are covering things that are really coming to the surface and to the truth um, for the very first time, actually. And we are all learning, and this is a learning process, and I'm just inviting you to walk with me in this learning process to feel led to. So in this video, I'm going to be covering the gospel of truth. Just two paragraphs we're going to go over because I felt like Yah highlighted it to me this morning. Um, the gospel of truth, I think, is very receptible. It's uh, very digestible. So I highly recommend people reading it. Um, it doesn't get into too much weird heavenly theology that is not on this earth that throws people off. You know, idolatry this and blah, blah, blah. All right. There's no falling away here. There is no worshiping false gods here. Um, this is actually what the scriptures speak of, of our sin nature that we are to overcome through knowledge and through wisdom, all covered in his grace. Okay. All right. So let's get to the scriptures. Okay, guys. So here we are in the gospel of truth. On your PDF, we're on page 8, and we're in the section, we're in the Meyer translation, because it's uh, the most digestible. Uh, Jesus as the fruit of knowledge. We're learning about Jesus. Um, we're just going to cover these two paragraphs, um, just to hoping to um, enlighten and sharpen and give some people some filling of their souls, and to encourage people um, to, to um, study these texts, if you feel led to. And we're going to go over some very basic uh, there are some basic things that are not in our Bibles we're just going to touch upon. Um, so that's going to be pretty cool. And um, I myself am learning myself. And I myself do get frustrated. You know, I myself found myself in like a dark night of the soul kind of thing. Like I felt led that by the Holy Spirit and all this kind of stuff that this stuff is true. And yet I'm finding what seems to be conflicting to what is in our Bibles. And that, that gets upsetting to me. But, um, you know, the Holy Spirit, he tests our reins and stuff. And it's really just keep studying, keep reading. You know, stop being hasteful, stop being, um, stop, you know, overcome that sin nature. Uh, be wise, be patient, uh, keep reading, keep studying. And the more I keep doing that, I am finding answers. It is our own sin nature to just be like, you know, Ah, oh, this is garbage, you know, throw this away, and blah, 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 and act in haste like that. I get that way too. So um, I'm learning myself, guys. Um, there are deep, deep concepts 
in the Nagmari scriptures that are not of this earthly plane. They are heavenly concepts. We cannot conceive of angelic heavenly concepts. But um, Yah has left the door for us to learn these things. Okay, if you can perceive and studying these scriptures, we, be, we can begin to learn. So there's a very basic, all right, we're gonna cover a little bit about male and female on this video. And again, I'm learning myself, but in the context of the text that we're talking about, uh, we're just gonna cover this, okay? So let's just go over these two paragraphs, which is really um, filling, really nice. Um, if I can, you know what, let's go back. Okay, here we are. Whoa, excuse me. Uh, okay. Can I do that? Okay, I'm sorry. All right, Jesus has the fruit of knowledge. Okay, here we go. So the, this is the two paragraphs I felt like y'all highlighted to me. And uh, so I just want to share them with you. So let's investigate what they say. There's actually some revelation in here about... Jesus' crucifixion that we could get some knowledge that we could glean from and there's a little bit of heavenly knowledge that we can glean from about what is considered female okay and we're going to go over that so we're going to we're also going to look into the gospel of thomas really quick and we're going to look into the second discourse of the great seth as well okay to cross-reference so here we go jesus has the fruit of knowledge this is the gospel of him who they seek revealed to the perfect through the father's mercy Okay, so this we know this is the full extent of the gospel. Okay, but this is this is what our Bibles truly teach in all its fullness. Okay, how do we become perfect? You know, though our grace preachers and we need our grace preachers, but we need to understand the fullness of the gospel. We are called to be perfect, and we cannot be perfect without the grace of the blood of Jesus. Okay, and how do we become perfect? When we work, when we walk in virtue to have dominion over our sin nature, clothed in the blood and grace of Jesus Christ, then we become perfect. Okay? So, this is the fullness of the gospel. So, we know the context of this text is absolutely biblically true. Okay? This is the gospel of him whom they seek. We are called to seek him, revealed to the perfect through the Father's mercy. Through the hidden mystery, Jesus Christ enlightened those who were in darkness because of forgetfulness. Okay, we are born in forgetfulness. We are born in darkness. All of us, when we come, um, when we are born into this world, when we are born into this plane of existence, we have no knowledge of God. We have no knowledge of the Father. We are born into darkness, called to come into the light. Okay, this is why in our Bibles, Jesus is... His coming is described as the breaking forth of the dawn. This is why in the Hebrew calendar, the day starts at sunset because we are all called to come out of darkness, okay? Um, this is sound theological doctrine, okay? So, um, through the hidden mystery, Jesus Christ enlightened those who were in darkness because of forgetfulness. He enlightened them and showed the way and that way is the truth he taught them, right? What did Jesus say? I am the way, the truth, and the life, okay? The way, okay? That is our virtue to bring forth good figs, to, to put fig leaves to cover our shame, to have dominion over our sin nature, and we cannot do it without his grace, okay? So yes, we're gonna fall on our faces, and we're gonna mess up, but we get up again, and we keep trying and not to exhaust ourselves and and you know that's not the rest of christ all this kind of stuff no we do that because when we keep doing that we refine and we do get stronger and we do ascend upwards okay we are called to ascend last night we just discovered this very rare obscure text that has nothing to do with the nag Hammadi scriptures has nothing to do with whatever it's called the prayer of jacob and and jacob said yeah teach me the way the wisdom in the stars so I can ascend to the knowledge of angels. This is what we're called to do. And this is why I believe the truth of the Nag Hammadi scriptures are coming to light for the first time for the last days. Like the very first time we are actually perceiving the actual truth of these scriptures in their true context. Okay, so we're all beginning here. This is very exciting and there's a lot to learn. 
I, I believe it feels like it takes years of reading this stuff to really start um, getting the concepts that are in these scriptures because they're very deep and very profound. Okay, so let's continue in the second paragraph, right? So he enlightened them and showed the way, and that way is the truth he taught them. Okay, now here we get into some really cool stuff, okay? And then I'll let you guys go. For this reason, Error was angry with him and persecuted him, but she was restrained by him and made powerless. He was nailed to a tree and he became fruit of the knowledge of the Father. This fruit of the tree, however, did not bring destruction when it was eaten, but rather it caused those who ate of it to come into being. Right? Anyone who knows their Bibles knows this is true. They were joyful in this discovery, and he found them within himself, and they found him within themselves. All right, so let's dissect this, because there's actually a lot of revelation in this one paragraph, okay? I'm going to zoom in here. Okay, here we are. For this reason, Era was angry with him and persecuted him. That is the enemy. That is darkness, okay? We are the children of the day, not children of the darkness, right? There's a division between light and darkness, okay? <clears throat> so for this reason, Era was angry with him and persecuted Jesus. But she was restrained by him and made powerless. Notice that Era is called a she, okay? Now previously on this channel, we've taught um, the concept of mother, okay? And I don't want to get into that concept. This is kind of out of context of what we're talking about here. Generally speaking, from my understanding, and I myself am learning these things, but from my understanding, the she, the she wisdom, the Sophia, the she aspect, which is the lower aspect on this earth, the male fatherly aspect is above us, okay, because on the second day of creation, the waters were divided by the firmament, okay? So, if you notice in your Bibles, wisdom is called a she. I believe in Psalm 34 or Psalm 134, the soul is called a she, okay? So, anything, so we are of that lower she aspect. And what do our Bibles say? That which is on earth is just a shadow of the things to come. It's just a shadow of the things in heaven. Therefore, the she feminine aspect of our existence here is just a shadow of what is of the true heavenly uh, aspect. Do you understand? Okay, so consider this. For this reason, error was made angry with him and persecuted him, but she was restrained by him and made powerless. Okay, so era is called a she. Now, let's take a look, guys. Um, now, what I just said, we could actually back up. Let's look in the second discourse of the great Seth. Okay, here we are um, in a passage here. And it says here, I am Christ, son of humanity, one from you who is within you. For you am, the, wait. For you I am despised, that you may dismiss what is impertinent. Don't become female, lest you give birth to evil, and what is related, jealousy, dissension, anger, wrath, dishonesty, and greed. So guys, this female that we're talking about, don't become female, this is not a sexist thing. It has nothing to do with male and female. This has to do with the shadow, uh, the dark shadow of wisdom from which we, are, we live in. Okay, everything in our existence is but a shadow of what is in heaven, and what is in heaven is what is to come. What is in heaven is the male. What is on earth is the female. That's, and that's eventually going to come together. You understand? So this is why it says, Don't become female, lest you give birth to evil, and what is related, jealousy, dissen dissension, anger, wrath, dishonesty, greed. Okay, so let's go back to the Gospel of Truth. Uh, for this reason, error was made angry with him and persecuted him, but she was restrained by him and made powerless. So yeah, we, this, these things are biblical, and we're touching upon concepts that are in our Bibles, but it's just deeper, deeper Hebraic biblical wisdom, and we can confirm them in, in the text. You see where I'm getting at? So another example, we see the same example, which is another rabbit hole of Revelation, the last saying in the Gospel of Thomas. 
okay, saying 114 in the Gospel of Thomas. Simon Peter said to them, Mary should leave us, for females are not worthy of life. Jesus said, Look, I shall guide her to make her male, so that she too may become a living spirit resembling you males. For every female who makes herself male will enter heaven's kingdom. Okay, now we just talked about all this male and female stuff. On the surface, we could get offended by this, but this has nothing to do with male and female. This has to do with um, the fatherly male wisdom, which is from heaven, and the shadowy female wisdom, which is our paradigm below. So when we understand this concept and we read this saying in the Gospel of Thomas, now it makes perfect sense. Because that which is in heaven will come down to earth. Okay, we are but in a shadow of the things to come. And now we can understand these deep, deep biblical mysteries. And we can say that, you know, what mainstream Christianity dismisses as her, her heresy. No, man, these are real deeper concepts of our Bibles. These are real sayings that we are called to walk into. And later, we are called to ascend like angels. We are called to grow. We are called to uh, progress. We are called to become heavenly. That is God's plan for our souls. So we can un uh, unwrap these mysteries and we can see the validity of these texts. They confirm each other. Okay? It's just deeper stuff that is not perceived in our perception of Christianity per se. Okay? So really cool. Really amazing. I'll put all this stuff in the description box below. All right. So let's continue in the second paragraph in the Gospel of Truth because there is more revelation to unveil and I'll let you guys go. This has to do with the tree of knowledge and good and evil. Now it says, here we are. Jesus was nailed to a tree and he became fruit of the knowledge of the Father. This fruit of the, <coughs> this fruit of the tree, however, did not bring destruction when it was eaten, but rather it caused those who ate of it to come into being. They were joyful in this discovery, and he found them within himself, and they found him within themselves. This is sound biblical standard doctrine being portrayed here. But let's glean this revelation. We've studied on this channel before, okay? We've learned that the wood of the cross that Jesus was crucified on was from the actual tree of knowledge of good and evil, okay? We, thanks to the Arminian Apocrypha, we learn this story that after Adam fell, he fasted for a very long time, and he was weeping and very sorrowful. Um, after his fast, an angel came to him and started giving him the revelation and, and taught him all this stuff. His son Seth eventually gave him a present, a gift, which was given to Seth by an angel, and it was a branch from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And what happened was, after Adam died, they buried that branch over his body in Golgotha. That branch eventually became a very large tree. And that is the very tree, the very bushel, which the ram was caught in the thicket when Abraham went to sacrifice Isaac on, the, on top of Golgotha. That ram caught in the thicket, which represents Christ, um, was caught in the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Okay? Now the tree of knowledge of good and evil is not wicked. All right, Jesus was crucified on that wood. It's not wicked, but the fruit of that, but the fruit of that is wickedness, is destruction, is the way of the devil, it's the way of the flesh. Okay. Now, um, I know people are going to say, "Well, a, a tree can't bring forth bad fruit." I'm kind of catching myself in my own words here. Um, I've been struggling with this uh, myself, but um, I'm, now I'm getting into theology. I, I really don't want to go down this trail. But um, this is kind of out of out of the context. Um, I, honestly, guys, I don't have all the answers. Um, this is something I, I've been wrestling with myself. I'm not really prepared to study on it. I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. So let let me continue. Just bear with me. I hope it doesn't throw people off. Um, again, I hope we don't walk in forgetfulness and be like, he messed up. I'm going to throw this whole thing away. Or I'm not, I'm not, why should I consider this? He's, this is not sound theology. That's our sin nature walking in. We need to be wiser. We need to see and perceive these things for ourselves. This is what the scriptures teach us. This is not condemnation. It is um, an encouragement. It is a building up. Okay? So let's see. Maybe we'll figure this out. Jesus was nailed to a tree and he became the fruit of the knowledge of the Father. 
Now, the tree of knowledge of good and evil represents um, our, our wrestle, but the wrestle we have between our sin nature and our good nature, that Holy Spirit spark within us. That's why a tree of knowledge of good and evil is not wicked, um, but its fruit in the tree of the garden was destruction. It was lust. It was the ways of the flesh. Okay? So Jesus was nailed to the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and he became fruit of the knowledge of the Father. So basically, Jesus' crucifixion on the tree of knowledge of good and evil um, made void that fruit of destruction. Okay? It made void that fruit of darkness of the underworld of the lust of the flesh. So I think that's what, you know, this is a mystery, but that's why we receive the actual tree is not evil. But its fruit in the beginning was evil, but after Messiah came, that fruit became the fruit of the Father. Okay? That virtue, our the triumph we have over our sin nature that cannot be done without the blood of Jesus' grace. You understand what I'm getting at? This is a complicated co uh, concept, but we are revealing this. Okay? So this is amazing. So Jesus was nailed to the tree, which was the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and he became fruit of the knowledge of the Father. So he made void the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, which is destruction and all that kind of stuff. Um, uh, on the origin of the world, you know, it says how the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you know, I wish I brought up that scripture to cross-reference this, but I didn't. Um, so that's an amazing revelation. Wow. I mean, I'm just learning this myself, but as I'm talking through it, it's, it's actually very profound. Um, if you could perceive this stuff, if you have, you know, Wow, it's very profound. So this fruit of the tree, however, did not bring destruction when it was eaten, but rather it caused those who ate of it to come into being. They were joyful in their discovery, and he found them within themselves, and they found him within themselves. Okay, it's all about knowledge, finding ourselves. This is in the Gospel of Thomas. If you don't find yourself in this world, we find who we are in Christ. We are not who this world says we are. We are who we are in Christ. Okay? And when we do that, it's joy. When we get wisdom, it brings joy. It's invincible joy. It's joy, light that cannot, that does not go out, as the wisdom of Solomon says. So this is a very profound revelation I think we have an answer to. Okay? If you could go back to the Armenian Apocrypha and perceive the tree of knowledge of good and evil was pretty much the cross that Jesus was crucified. That's what that wood was made out of. Um, and so he may void that poisonous fruit at the crucifixion. Therefore, the tree itself is not wicked, but it was meant as a fast for Adam. Now, now it all makes sense. Okay? So, back in the garden, the tree of knowledge of good and evil was meant as a fast. It's not, it's not some wicked tree we have nothing to do with because it was in Eden. Okay? There's no way. Why should wickedness reside in paradise? It was reserved as a fast because its, its redemption was reserved for later. And this is all the sovereign hand of God, the foreknowledge of him already knowing Adam would fall, and all that kind of stuff. It, it's very profound, very amazing. So through this scripture, we could perceive how Jesus actually made void that tree, and he redeemed the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And, it, and everything meant for evil was meant for good. This is the characteristics of the Father. And now it became virtue, it became joy, it became discovery, and it became, it really defeated the devil. Very profound. Very amazing. So, alright guys, I just wanted to share this with you. Um, I pray this was a blessing. I hope people can receive this. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Enjoy your day. Perhaps I'll be on later. I'll leave this stuff in the description box below. Thanks for tuning in. Have a good day.